Hi, I'm Dr. Rusty Jennings. I'm the director of the esophageal atresia treatment program here at Children's Hospital in Boston. We're also an associated hospital with Harvard, so I'm also an associate professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School. And I'm here to talk to you today about esophageal atresia. Now, esophageal atresia is a relatively uncommon problem. It only occurs in one in three to 5,000 pregnancies, so most people don't know a lot about it. When you think about the esophagus, you think about swallowing, going from your mouth to your stomach. Esophageal atresia is when that tube doesn't develop correctly. Here at Children's Hospital Boston, we've worked very closely with Dr. John Foker to develop a structurally normal esophagus in these babies who have esophageal atresia, no matter how severe. So let me show you what a normal esophagus is. This diagram shows a trachea. There's the vocal cords here, the epiglottis, which keeps you from inhaling food, and the trachea, which is the tube that, you, uh, that moves the air in and out of the lungs. Here in brown is the esophagus going from the back of the mouth all the way down to the stomach across the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the breathing muscle that separates the abdomen from the chest. So the esophagus acts as a conduit for food. And intimate between the two is the wall. Each of them has a wall very close to the other, and that's why you can't talk about one without talking about the other. So here we have various forms of esophageal atresia or esophageal maldevelopment. We can start over here in the simplest form. Remember that common wall or this intimate wall between the trachea and the esophagus. Sometimes that doesn't form correctly and a little hole forms and we call that hole a TEF. That stands for trachea esophageal fistula and a fistula is just a hole or an abnormal connection. Other anomalies in the esophageal development spectrum include the most common form. This is called the type C esophageal atresia, where a little portion of the esophagus didn't develop. It just never occurred to the esophagus to make a formal connection. So we end up with a blind ending pouch, no communication to anything, and the distal esophagus, or the part on the bottom connected to the stomach, connects right into the trachea. So when this baby breathes air in, some of that air can go down into the stomach. And when this baby swallows liquid or saliva, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays in the back of the baby's throat and causes the baby maybe to cough or something like that. So this is called type C, and this connection right here is called a TEF. Other versions which are similar to this would occur when we have a short segment of esophagus missing, we have the distal tracheoesophageal fistula, but we also have an abnormal communication up here. So in here, we have two TEFs, one proximally and one distally. Now these two types of uh, esophageal atresia, so-called short gap or type C variants with the proximal tracheoesophageal fistula are relatively easy to fix. Almost all pediatric surgeons can fix these. And it merely requires dividing the fistulas and reconnecting them. But there's another type of esophageal atresia which is more difficult, and that's pure esophageal atresia. And pure esophageal atresia, or so-called long gap esophageal atresia, you may see the terms LGEA for long gap esophageal atresia, really refers to these. And this is where the bottom part of the esophagus, this part, never connected up to the trachea. There's no fistula up here for the bottom segment. So you have a much shorter portion of distal esophagus, which only goes from here to here, as opposed to this part, which goes from here to here. And what we are left with is a gap here, which is relatively long, and that's where the long gap comes from, as opposed to this gap, which is usually relatively short. So in long gap esophageal atresia, this part can be of different length. This is not a simple problem, but it has multiple variants which can be progressively complex. And in extreme, we may have a segment of the lower end, which say is three or four centimeters long, or we may have this lower end of the esophagus. Instead of being above the diaphragm right here, it might be a little nubbin like this, well below the diaphragm. And almost all pediatric surgeons would say that when you have a situation like this, that's this far apart, 
it can't be fixed. But I will tell you, using Dr. Folker's process of esophageal growth, not stretching, growth, you can always fix these esophageal atresia babies.